Details are important, but making them manually is time consuming. So that's why I created Celeste Tools, a collection of artist-friendly tools which enables you to add magical details to your artworks with ease. Get it on Blender Market or Gumroad so you can focus on creativity instead of the technical things. In this video I'm gonna show you how to use these tools and give you some examples where to use them. First of all, go to Edit, Preferences, File Paths, click on the plus button and navigate to the Celeste Tools folder. And now it's here and change the import method to Append. We don't want to reuse the data, we just want to add brand new instances to the scene. Alright, let's make a new window here. Choose Asset Browser. Click here and choose Celeste Tools. This one is my favorite because I can finally stop using the same constellations I made three years ago. Now I can just make a new one every second. Let me show you how it works. Let's drag the constellation here. Let's go to rendered view and if you hit tab go to edit mode and now you can change the handles and you have different kind of constellations. Or you can hit A and delete all the vertices and draw your own constellations. If you want to be more accurate, click on the pen tool and click, 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 and you have a custom constellation. One thing to mention is when you draw a curve, make sure you are in orthographic mode. So either in front view, side view, or top view, because if you draw it in perspective mode, the rotations won't be right. Okay, let me show you the settings. So click on the modifiers and you can change the dashed length so you can have solid lines or dotted lines or this in between. You can change the gap is the distance between each dash. So it's basically the density of the line. Then you have the thickness, the subdivision of the dashes. You can choose from round caps or these squared ones. The clean area is the area around each instance where the dashes get deleted. So imagine a box around each instance and you can grow that box and it deletes the dashes around the instances. You can change the spline resolution so it's more curved, but you can see it doesn't change for this one. Why? Because this has different kind of handle types. To change the handle type, hit V and click on Aligned. Now you can change the spline resolution and it changes to this one as well. You can disable the instances and now you can just draw simple dashed lines, which is a cool option in my opinion, and you can enable it anytime. So you have the instances there. You can also hide the line so you can have crazy star fields going on like this in a matter of seconds. So that's a cool thing as well. You can change the color. You can choose from different kind of instance types. So we have randomized, alternating, which is sphere, star, sphere, star, sphere, star, and so on. You can choose stars only or spheres only. And let's go back to randomized. You can change the size here and you can have different kind of seed values. So you have bigger instances, smaller ones. If you want them to be uniform, Set the size min and max to the same value. And you can drag down and set the size like that. You can trim the curve from the start and from the end as well. And one cool thing, you can have segments. So you, we have a segment here. And if you drag this down and drag these both, you can have this cool effect going on. You can hide the start point and this is for complex shapes. Here's an example go to edit mode, I want to connect this to here. So hit E and you see the stars are overlapping. To fix this, just click on start point and it hides the start point and now you can adjust the handles till you like it. Want to be even more complex, just draw, draw and draw and now you have a complex constellation. You can hide the end point as well if that's your thing and the middle point. It looks good if you have a higher resolution and hide the middle point and now you can just draw these kind of constellations and the cool thing you can combine this with the trim and the trim start thing and you can have this cool animation you can change the stars so you can have more points or less points subdivisions and the bevel amount so you can have spiky stars or this really cute chubby stars 
If you disable limit radius, you can make crazy shapes if you change the bevel amount. So you can make snowflakes if you have six points. You see, you have a snowflake. How cool is that? You can adjust the inner radius and the outer radius and the twist and the depth. You can have 2D stars or bulky stars. You can unfill these stars and you can change the thickness with the depth slider. Let's go to the spheres. You can change their size and subdivisions and unfill them and change the thickness. Yeah, you see the those lines appeared, so just change the clean area and you're good to go. With this tool, you can be Tinkerbell nah, baby, this Taco Bell. and make anything look magical in a matter of seconds. Let's add the Stardust and change this color to something else because it's the same as the background. All right, if you go to edit mode, delete everything and draw your own curves, you can do it in perspective mode as well. It doesn't matter this time. So we have subdivisions for the spheres, density, taper, which makes the curve thinner towards the end. Basically, it makes the stardust nicer. You can change the size and give some variety to it. The movement scale is basically the width and this is animated. So the movement scale also defines how far away these particles travel. The frame range is for the loop. So this animation loops at 300 frames. Let me show you. You can see it loops. There's no lag. And if your end frame is, for example, 500, then you can see it doesn't loop. And if you set this to 500, then it will loop. You can see. And if you have a more complex frame range, for example, starts at 22 and at 612, then do the math in here. 612 minus 22 plus 1, because you want to include the first frame as well. And it will loop beautifully. Okay, we have the animation speed. If you set this to zero, it will stop, even though it's animated. Then the seed, then you can change colors and change the seed for the colors. If you want more than four colors, then go to shading, add a stardust material. And you can see, plug this in if you want more than four colors, plug this in and add the new color and distribute stops from left. And you can see it's there. Without stars, these artworks just look empty. That's why I use them all the time. Let's drag the stars here. And they are rotated this way because I usually add the constraint to them, attract to constraint, and the target is the camera. And they look perfect in camera view. If you go to edit mode, you can see vertices and you can duplicate them and populate the scene with stars. And let's check the settings. You can change the points, the inner radius and the outer radius, twist, the bevel amount and the segments. You can change the star type to unfilled, which gives you this outline thickness and you can change it to outline as well. So you have a nice outline and give depth to it. So you can do, go with 2D stars or 3D stars. Then you can randomize the size. So give some variety to it, randomize the rotation, but I usually just randomize on the Z axis. These stars are animated as well and they are looping. So you have the frame range. If you have 500 frames, then set it to 500. Animation speed is one, but you can make them faster or make them stop. The seed value, then some colors, outline color and the seed for the colors. And you can add more colors in the shading tab by selecting the star material and plug this in. This pearl tool was inspired by Victoria who uses this so well. I should start implementing pearls into my artworks. Let me show you the pearls. You can go to edit mode, delete the whole thing and draw your own pearls. Let's see the settings. 
the size one is the size of the first sequence of the spheres, the subdivision one is the same thing, size two is the size of the second sequence of the spheres. You can change the gap, so you can make it more dense or less dense. Pearl type can be alternating and randomized. When you choose randomize, these settings won't change a thing, only these ones. So you can change the size here and the seed of these. You can hide the curve, you can change the thickness here and the taper and the spline resolution and the bevel resolution, the color of the first pearl, the color of the second pearl, the line color as well. The seed doesn't work this time, only if you change to randomize, then the seed works. The next one is the particle fill, which I use in all of my artworks. But this is not an object, this is a modifier, so let's add the cube and you can drag it on to this cube. And you can see they appeared, but you can add it in a different way. Delete this and add modifier, Celeste tools, particle fill, and they are there. And you can uncheck keep original, so you can only see the particles, but I want to see the cube as well. So I'm going to enable that and add the magic transparency to it, so we can see through the object. If you have more modifiers applied, make sure the particle fill is in the right order. There's a weird thing with the materials. So if your second material is set to object link, then it will override the material of the particles. To fix it, just don't use object link materials on the second material slot. You can use it anywhere else though, except the second slot. If you know why this happens, please let me know. The fill method is set to bounding box, which is the fast, it gives you a faster playback. The volume is more accurate. The difference between these two is if you have a weird geometry going on, like this for example, you can see that it doesn't work. But if you set it to volume, then it will work, but it will be slower. So we have density, uh, offset, subdivisions of the spheres, size max and size min to give it some variety, the movement scale. So this is animated and you can change the movement scale. The frame range again for the looping animation, animation speed, set it to zero to make it static, seed, and you can change the colors here. And if you want more than four colors, go to shading, add your particle fill material and plug this in if you want more than four colors and add a color here. The rainbow is pretty cool because you can use it as a small detail or the main focus of your scene. Let's add the rainbow. You can draw your own rainbows in edit mode, but there's a problem. So when one of the handle points are perfectly perpendicular, then it rotates like this. So to solve this, just click on that wrong handle and rotate it a tiny bit. And that's it. You can change the width of the rainbows, the spline resolution, and the coolest thing is the tilt. So if you tilt it, don't do it this way, just type 800 here and you can see you made a spiral. So to make it nice, uh, increase the spine resolution. And the tilting is only happening between two control points, you see. And to solve that issue, you can control T and tilt this as well. Or just delete those points and keep two points per each spiral. You can disable the outline, change the outline thickness, the outline resolution and the color. If you want more than four colors, then add the rainbow material to it and plug this in and add the new color to the color ramp. Put the halo around something to make the object more interesting. And the last one is the halo. Let's drag it here. And if you go to edit mode, I don't recommend drawing lines. I recommend you adding circles. So add circles here. So you can increase the count of these spheres and the subdivision, the outline and the outline thickness. You can change the size of them to randomize its look. The placement max is, and the placement min is basically this. So it randomizes the placement of this sphere and the same thing with the max. Uh, you can change the seed of these and hide the curve, bevel resolution, spline resolution, and curve thickness, and the sphere color, and the line color. 
and the outline color.